Hi, I'm Katsara. For the lovely people who are following me on Instagram, I want to say thank you for your support. We've reached 2000 followers. This tutorial is for you. In this tutorial, I will show you how I've done this animation. In the first part of the video, I will show you how to prepare your files for After Effects and how you can do this up and down movement. In the second part, you will learn how to do this wave animation and how to export your file for social media. So yeah, let's start. You will need Adobe After Effects for the animation and for those who want to follow along, I've prepared a zip file for you with all the images and the final animation file. I linked it in the description below so you can easily download it. But you are also welcome to create your own illustrations. I'm using Photoshop for all my illustrations. I want to let you know that you can also use other programs for that. I know that a lot of you are drawing on an iPad, that also works. Let's start with the first step, the sketches. You need to plan ahead what you want to animate. Here for example, you will have a background which is static, it means it won't move. Then you want these two elements to move up and down and we also have the wave in between. Just do some sketches and have your animation already in mind. If you have your rough concept, you can start illustrating. I don't want to go in detail on how I'm doing my illustrations because we want to focus here on the animation itself. But let me know if you're also interested in that, I might do another tutorial in the future. Here's my final illustration in Photoshop. Let's go and see what kind of layers I have. Here you see that I have a background layer, a separate layer for the circle. Um, we don't really need the wave clipping mask layer because we're going to recreate the waves in After Effects. But I won't delete it because we want to use it as a reference guide. What we need is the textured wave layer. I have it currently hidden. We will use it as a clipping mask and reveal it later on in After Effects. I'm now going to merge the body and the hair layer together because I don't want to animate the hair and we want to keep our layers clean and structured. I also recommend to rename all your layers. Trust me, it will make your life in After Effects much easier. Here I will rename the layer to Character. After that, I will change some settings, go to Image and Image Size, change the resolution to 72 pixel per inch and the image size to 1080 by 1350 pixels for the standard Instagram portrait size. The reason why I scale it down is because if your image is too large, your computer might have some issues with processing the big files and you don't need a higher resolution for Instagram anyways. Now we are ready to import our layers into After Effects. The benefit of using Photoshop is that you can easily drag and drop the Photoshop file into After Effects and it will automatically import all layers that you've prepared and also a composition. A composition is a container where you can layer multiple files together, like you see it here. After Effects would use the same dimensions that you had in Photoshop before. If you want to change it, go to the import panel, right click on your composition and click on composition settings. There you can change the numbers. Also make sure that you set the frame rate to 24 per second and the duration to 10 seconds. So we can loop the video seamlessly for Instagram. If you don't use Photoshop or Illustrator, you'll need to export all your layers as images. Here you see I have the background image as a JPEG file. The circle is a PNG file because we need the transparency. Here you see the other images that I've already prepared. The way to import the files is exactly the same. Simply drag and drop them. After that, you have to create a new composition by right-click New Composition. 
Don't forget to change the dimensions. That will be 1080 pixels by 1350 pixels. Check if the frame rate is on 24 per second and the duration should be 10 seconds. I will also change the name of the composition to Final Comp for Final Composition. Now you can drag all layers into your composition. It looks a little bit messy at the moment because the layers are not in the right orders. Simply rearrange it and you are good to go. I will hide the wave texture layer here by clicking on this icon. If you are now happy with your layers, we can start animating. By the way, if you have a different workspace than I have, make sure to go to Window, Workspace, Animation. Alright, we will start with the up and down movement of the circle. For that, we need to expand the circle layer by clicking on the arrow next to the layer. Now expand the transform settings. We want to animate the position of the circle. To do that, click on the stopwatch next to the position. Now you see it's marked as blue, so it's activated. And you also see a keyframe in the timeline. The left value is for the x-axis, it's if you want to move something horizontally. But we don't need it right now because we want to move the circle up and down. We want to change the position of the y-axis to 645. You see the circle just moved up. Now go to 2.5 seconds and place another keyframe. And here we want to change the position to 705. Next, go to 5 seconds and place another keyframe and change the value to 645. So the first and the last value should be the same. Now if you go back and play it, by hitting on spacebar, it will move down and up one time. But we want to loop it. Of course you can easily do it manually by placing another keyframe to 7.5 seconds and 10 seconds and change the values there. But imagine if you have more keyframes and a longer duration of the video, it will take you quite a long time to do that. There's a faster way and the magic word is expression. Expressions are JavaScript codes and you can apply them to your layers. It's actually pretty fun to experiment with. There are a lot of code snippets out there, but for now we only focus on the loop expression. You will find the code snippet for the loop expression in the description box below. To apply the loop expression to the layer, we have to press Option and click on the stopwatch next to whatever you want to loop. In this case, we want to loop the position. So I press Option and click on the stopwatch next to the position. Here you can put the code inside. It's loop in plus loop out minus value. If you play it now, it should loop seamlessly. I'm not quite happy with the movement right now, it doesn't feel natural. To fix that, I will select the keyframes, then right click keyframe assistant and easy ease. If you open the graph editor, you will see what happened. If you don't put easy ease, the speed of the animation will remain the same and it doesn't feel natural, but if you put easy ease, it will slow down the speed at the start and at the end of the animation. You can actually play around with the settings, but I will leave it like this. To exit this view, you have to click on the graph editor again. Now you can basically copy and paste the animation for the character layer, because we want her to move up and down as well. Click on position, press Ctrl C to copy the settings. Make sure you are at zero seconds in your timeline now go to your character layer, select transform and press Ctrl V to place it. If you play it, you see that they are now moving pretty much the same. Of course, because they have the same settings. But we want to alternate the movement. 
I like to offset my keyframes. So select all your keyframes and move it. I will move it to 12 frames. Now if you play it, it looks much more interesting. Congratulations, we just finished our first animation. Click on part 2 to see how I've done the wave animation. See you!